Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our Zoom call with uh, our WBA World Heavyweight Championship participants and promoter Don King. Don, I'm gonna ask you to uh, start the call with a few comments about the big night of boxing that we're gonna have in Ohio at the WD Packard Music Hall. Don, go ahead. <clears throat> it's gonna be a great super night of boxing. There's going to be six championship fights, and, and these six champion fights will represent two world titles and the seasonal... Recording in progress. What she say? Recording. Go ahead. Go okay, ahead, and there will be two world titles of the WBA, Trevor Bryant and Jonathan Guthrie, and, uh, and uh, I, I, what you say, I, 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 Tuna, I, Luna, Junior, Makabu, you know, and, and, and Tabisto uh, in, in Machuchu. You know, his name is not for a property thing, but we're going to have fun. We're going to put fun back into it all and boxing again. And it's going to be super spectacular greatness. And it's going to be something that everybody can enjoy on pay-per-view at home with their friends where they have taken their shot and got the protection of against the uh, uh, the COVID. And, and we're going to enjoy ourselves again and not be ruled by the COVID, but we're going to work together to have fun and enjoy a great evening of boxing, of six title fights that will take place uh, and uh, at, at, at the Packard uh, Music Center here in Warren, Ohio. So I'm looking forward to it. January 29th, don't forget that date. And don't forget to get out there and get this thing where you can have your friends and your family at home and enjoy yourself with an exciting, spectacular blockbuster boxing. Thanks, Don. Now we'd like to uh, welcome Jonathan Guidry. Jonathan, uh, before we open it to Q&A from the media out there, uh, your thoughts about uh, going up for the World Heavyweight Championship and facing Trevor Bryan? Yes, sir. I think that's a great opportunity for myself to get a shot at the world title. What do you know about Trevor? And uh, I'm sure you've watched some tape of him. Uh, what are your thoughts of that? And also your thoughts of the dream of becoming heavyweight champion? Uh, we did some film on him. Uh, Travis pretty good, got some good jab, but I don't think he's one of the elite heavyweights, and I think we uh, we have a better shot with him for a world title fight. Okay, we're going to open it up to questions. Uh, you raise your hand, and uh, I will call on you, and you can ask your questions. The first question comes from James Conlon. James? Hi, Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, what is preparation been like for the fight in terms of the training camp and in terms of sparring partners? Uh, we've been in Houston with Bobby Benton. And, uh, he has a lot of world champions. And uh, they've just been uh, giving me real uh, good sparring, big guys, and make sure that we could uh, have enough gas in the tank to get to the 12 rounds if we have to go that far. Yeah, and uh, Jonathan, you mentioned that, and you mentioned going for 12 rounds. I mean, you look at Thomas Bryan's uh, record. Is there any opponent on his resume so far that really stands out for you? Or do you, you mentioned this is a fight that you believe you have a chance of taking down, uh, 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 becoming a world champion? Is Yeah, I find he has a really foot. Uh, you know, he's, he's been fighting a long time in the amateur, and uh takes a lot to get, you know, in the ring. So I know he's pretty prepared, but I don't think he really uh, had a big fight against a real top heavyweight. So neither have I. So I think he's pretty much a good test for both of us to see who really deserves it. And finally, if I can finish off by asking Don a question. Uh, Don, in terms of this fight, do you see this really one going the distance? Do you feel this being a blockbuster for the fans? I think it's going to be a great fight because they are two undefeated fighters and they're coming together like, like uh, uh, Jonathan said, Johan said, you know, the, the test is there. And so the one who wants us the most is the one who will win it. It's going to be a super, super attraction though. And what's so great about it, it gives the fans an opportunity to get some relief momentarily from uh, the threats of the COVID with all of the different threats of the way the government is being run and whatever. But you give you a chance to be at home at your house with your family and looking at it on uh, Don King live streaming.com, uh, Don King.com, 
and see it on pay-per-view because it's going to be happening in, in Warren, Ohio, and that's going to probably be a sellout. And so that will be something we all will look forward to, and I'm looking forward to it with great anticipation and great excitement. Thank you. Okay, we're going to call on Ted Lewis. Ted Lewis. Yes, uh, Jonathan, uh, you were actually supposed to be up in Ohio today, and uh, I think through the your efforts of your management, you got it postponed until Saturday. It gives you a few extra days with uh, Bobby the train and there in Houston. How much of an advantage do you think that is for you? How much of a boost is it to spend a few extra days with Bobby? Like I said, it's pretty good because we just got there with him, so we didn't get the full camp fully. And because uh, we were supposed to fight Alonzo Butler, and we was preparing for that. But now we fight for a world title, a bigger title. So we uh, went with a world coach, you know, to make sure he's going to be in our corner and uh, he's going to, you know, he's going good. Another question for you. As the days get shorter uh, or get closer to the, to the fight, we're about a week and a half away now. How much, uh, how much uh, are you mentally focused on it? Is your anticipation growing? And uh, are you worried about getting a little too overly emotional about things? No, I'm not too bad. I'm uh, actually, you know, uh, we're not really stressing over it. We're not really thinking too much of uh, to get worried about it. Uh, it's kind of uh, hard to say, you know. Uh, we just ready, man. We're real ready. It's more now mental. We did all the physical part. Now it's kind of mental. Don't get too, you know, too excited about it, but uh, I think we're going to do well. And one last thing. Uh, what's been your level of, in, uh, of preparation this week? How how much sparring are you doing? And uh, are, are, are you healthy? You haven't had any injuries or anything like that? No, we've been good. We've been sparring uh, – we getting a lot of rounds in when uh, Bobby's heavyweight Najee. He's uh, I think he's like uh, 28 and 10. He's real good, real strong, and uh, we've been we've been doing real good. And Don, if I could ask you, uh, I know your guy was uh, supposed to fight uh, uh, Char or whatever his name was. I forget if he couldn't get his visa. Tell me about how you came across, found out about Jonathan, and what makes you feel like someone who was basically fighting from obscurity is uh, worthy of a, a, of a heavyweight championship fight. Well, that's what makes boxing so great. Yesterday's nobodies becomes tomorrow's somebody. And no one, if they didn't get the opportunity, no one would have been a Tyson, no one would be no Ali. So you got to give them opportunity. Star, the star of glory is in the opportunity. And so here's a guy that is undefeated, and so is uh, 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 Trevor Bryant, undefeated. And so now they got to go out there and they got to fight. And that gives the, the, the fans a great anticipation of excitement because neither one of these guys have, have tasted uh, defeat. And, and from this year, this star of opportunity means future greatness. Whoever comes about, you know, in the six winners of these six fights will six champions going for the future. So that's going to bring great glory to the future boxing and what we got to see and what we've seen in the past sets a guideline for what will go in the future when you dedicate yourself, train hard, and believe in God, and have the faith that you can be what you want to be. And that's the champion of the world. So I'm, I was very excited to be able to get to him. And Les Bernano is, uh, is the guy who put it together with, with uh, Al Bernani, uh, my matchmaker. And so therefore, we had, uh, uh, they brought him in. And when I seen his record and I seen the attitude that, uh, that he possessed, and that he said he's going in there to win the title. He's not going in there to have no fight. He's going in there to win the title. All right. So therefore, that gives me uh, the impetus to go out and put that together along with other title fights that will give the fans, give the people what they want. That's the most important thing about promoting. Promote the people. And that's what I do. But my people are my most important assets. And so what I want to do is to do something and do something that we can give back uh, to the people, give back and work with them with all of the different things there. So we want to be able to make a star that becomes a people's champion that will be able to contribute both mentally and psychologically, physically, and spiritually to say, yes, I can, when everyone else says, no, you can't. One last thing, Trevor hasn't had a fight in a year. Uh, how rusty do you, do you worry about him being rusty? 
Well, I don't worry about that, but I, I am concerned uh, because the WBA, uh, God bless them, uh, you know, we had, you, you can't, when you're the champion you know, under the way it was, what you got, uh, a, a guy that's standing out there waiting with a mandatory, you can't afford to take a fight. They won't allow you to take a fight. And so they more or less have to held us hostage, not intentionally, just by the rules that they have. And so it, put, it, it locked Trevor down for a whole year. In fact, the same identical date, January 29th, last year. So now Trevor goes in there and shards out now. So therefore, we can go out now and start fighting uh, regularly. And, and, and this is what we anticipate doing, uh, and, uh, if he should be able to win. And naturally, if, 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 if Gidry wins, he's going to be ready to go right, right off the bat. We have no obligations, no strings attached. You got a great got, got great managers, and you got a guy in less less banana. So we got something that we all can work together with and and have fun and, and have fun while doing it. It'll take the pressure off of us uh, from all the things that's happening to us in life right now during this this uh, pandemic season. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. We'll now take the next question from Carlos Toro. Carlos. Thank you, and thank you, Jonathan and Don, for being here on this uh, on this call. First of all, Jonathan, I, I was reading online, and I think it was on BoxRec, where it said that you had actually fought Trevor Bryant in the amateurs more than 10 years ago. I wanted to ask, first of all, is that true? And if so, what do you remember from that time? Yeah, we fought at, uh, I believe it was in Indiana, at the uh, Golden Glove Nationals. We had fought, and uh, like I said, he was just an amazing big guy. And uh, like I say, he's uh, got a real good jab, but you know, once we get around the jab, we better work in on him. You know, one thing from, you know, it's been over a decade since that's happened. And looking back, do you sort of feel that you're a, such a completely different fighter than the one that that you were about over 10 years ago when you first fought uh, Trevor Bryan? Yes, sir. We have a lot more fights now. I believe I was in the amateur fighting at like 215 at a super heavyweight. So I was kind of smaller then. He was big. Now I'm at 250, a lot smarter, a lot faster on my feet. So, and a lot stronger. So we ready. You know, one thing that obviously a lot of people were kind of caught off guard that your name suddenly popped out and now you're fighting uh, Trevor Bryan. Uh, how was sort of your uh thought process and what was it like sort of when you got the call and all of a sudden you get offered to fight trevor bryan and if uh, and don uh, at the end if you could sort of uh expand upon that a, a little bit and sort of how getting that uh getting jonathan that fight done and dealing with the wb and sort of and approving this fight well i was supposed to fight uh alonzo butler first and then you know but they asked us to step up because his opponent couldn't show so it was uh I've been fighting my whole life for this opportunity. They ain't like, you know, like they call me. I've been training. You know, I've been waiting for an opportunity like this my whole life. And then now that it presents itself, we ain't, we got to take it. So. And Don, if you could sort of expand upon that a, a little bit and sort of getting Jonathan the, the title shot and dealing with the WBA and, and seeing if that and that fight would, would have been approved by then. And obviously now it is. Well, it's a pleasure to prove because they both were on the card. He was on the card scheduled to fight Alonzo uh, 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 Butler. And uh, and so rather than to stop the fight and the card there and Shaw again uh, uh, came up with a short change on, on his visa, I was hoping that we would have Shaw because so many different stories that came out and so many lies have been, been told in, the, in regards to that. But I think that the fight would have been settled at all, you know what I mean? Because Shaw had not defended his title in over close to four years uh, before we came on the scene. And so therefore, I would have loved to have had Shaw in there. But since we, Shaw did not come in, and due to the rules and regulations of the WBA, uh, they told us in the front that if I don't be there, uh, 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 Trevor going to lose his, his position as champion. And if, and if Shaw don't be there, he's going to lose his position as champion in recess. And so we all knew like a month ahead of time from uh, 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 December the 5th and, uh, uh, and then we come back in uh, whatever it is, whatever the dates that might not be correct, it's January the 5th or whatever, but whatever, you know, we had plenty of time to get ready and everybody would get their visas and come on in there and be ready. Well, he couldn't, he didn't meet the deadline. So now rather than to go change and go look for an opponent to get the fight, we made an appeal to the WBA that we had 
a champion, a guy was going to fight for the, what you call the WBA, uh, the, the WNABA, that's a North American Boxing Association title, which comes with the United States, Mexico, Canada, and Puerto Rico uh, uh, with, with Alonzo. Uh, so we could take him off because he got a perfect record. So therefore, we appealed to them to let this fight go on sort of the date and everything that we had spent money on promoting and setting it up, that it would be right there. And so they graciously, after studying it out, they felt again, that, and they realized that uh, 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 Brian hadn't fought in a year. So they had punished him already. Even though there was good intentions, you know what I mean, he still, he, was, uh, he hadn't fought in a year. And so they're okay to fight it, and I thank them for that, and that was most gracious. So, but that's why I put on six title fights to make certain that the public gets what they want. Everyone is a main event. So therefore, we're gonna go down the line because every one of those champions will be, uh, have an opportunity uh, to gain fame, acclaim, and affluence because uh, they go definitely into the rankings of the uh, world rankings of the WBA. And they also have that title of the NABA, the North American uh, Boxing Association. So that gives everybody an opportunity to have fair play and at the same time, getting a chance for them to, to capture their dream and make it happen. And that's what we want to do on this spectacular evening of boxing on January 29th. And you can get it on the Don King uh, streaming, live streaming.com for $49.99 here in America. And, uh, and the, the big company with uh, Mike Weber, who's going to be carrying the, uh, the, uh, the pay-per-view around the world. You know, they got different prices, you know what I mean, that they will be uh, playing around the world. It'll be, I think it's $15. And in and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and Canada, I think it's $39.99. Uh, $39. So I think you're going to have a great evening of show of boxing, and you have a chance to entertain and be right at home with the safety of your home, with your family and your friends. And I'm looking forward to it with great excitement and great anticipation and you'll see it soon on January 29th, Saturday night, when they go out and have a spectacular evening of boxing with featuring six champions of, of taking place on the same night in the same place. So we're going to be at the, the, the Packard Music Hall on the 29th, and we're looking forward to giving everybody a great evening of boxing. Thank you, John. Uh, Thanks, thank, you, John. thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Carlos. Let's go to the behind the gloves team. Uh, you're up for your question. Behind the gloves. Hi there. Hopefully you can hear me now. Jonathan, I just wanted to ask you a bit about your background. Um, been reading up about your shrimping, your crabbing, how you have only just gone full time as a boxer. Um, tell me how things have changed for you. What difference does that make? And also, are you still doing shrimping? Are you still doing crabbing? Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, we had, uh, well, I stopped around November, shrimping and crabbing and stuff. And uh, we've been doing two times a day training. And I lost... I lost easily like 30 pounds. I'm in way better shape and I can uh, focus more time just on boxing, going two a days, you know, and uh, I feel a lot better, a lot stronger. And uh, like I said, we're ready. Excellent. And I hear you've got great support coming across the country for you. Uh, who's coming over? And, and, and also what for you, you are the underdog. You have a great set of records though, unbeaten as well. But what for you would make this a great underdog story? Uh, it's a great story to bring back. I don't think no one has a world heavyweight title down from Louisiana really, or where we from. So it's like a big opportunity for me to really show my talent that I really can fight. I'm really strong and I believe that, uh, I'm really, to be honest, I don't think it's gonna go the distance, but we preparing ourselves for it just in case it happens that way. You don't think it's going to be going the distance. So what do you expect from this fight? You're both unbeaten. Uh, I don't think nobody's going to make it past the seven or eight round. Excellent. Thank you. All right. We'll go to Zachary Sanuko. Zachary. Hi. Uh, yeah. I just had a quick question for Jonathan. Um, so how is this fight going to be different than your previous fights as this fight is going to be the first time that you're also facing someone who is undefeated? Uh, I wouldn't say it's different. I don't look at a fight different to me. I always go in and uh, fight my heart out, you know, so he's going to have to come down the dog. 
so they kind of might be overlooking me, and which I hope, and we're going to shock them. Perfect. And then, Don, uh, quick question for you. Um, how good does it feel uh, to be back out there and back at the events and finally going to be able to see some fans out there who are showing love for the sport of boxing? You know what? The, it, it really gives me a great feeling of, uh, uh, of happiness because I'm a promoter of the people. You know, I'm a promoter of the people, by the people, and for the people, and my magic lies in my people ties. And all the other promoters that would be out there, they've just about let the business die, and they all depend upon uh, uh, TV fees in order to put on their shows. I don't promote shows for TV uh, uh, stations. I'm through that to when you can get one. I promote the people because they're the most important, and that's who you're zeroing in on. And it gives a lot of symbolic uh, uh, ways that people can, in America, that especially, they can wish for something and then they have to work for it and they dream about it. They got to dedicate themselves and, 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 and redirect the energy into fighting for what they do. So they get that opportunity here. And that's what I want to do is, is buy upon that opportunity, that democratic policy of a, of a democracy. But this gives you something to fight back on where it comes to you as an individual. You know what I mean? Getting the opportunity is the most important thing. After that, it's up to you. You know what I mean? So now I feel thrilled that I will be back out there with my people, and that's people of the world, and to be able to deal with we the people here in America and to be able to give them something that is extraordinary and that will be something that will be a spectacular. And that's why I put together uh, six uh, title fights rather than just one title fight or two title fights. I put six together. And so now that means they're going to have a, an evening. If one bite don't reach up to what they would expect, they're going to have five other ones to fill in to change it. You know what I mean? So everyone would be a, a, a main event in itself. And it makes right. me feel good to be able to bring that to the people and to give the excitement back to them and give them an opportunity uh, in, in this crisis-oriented time of the COVID-19 to be together with home and family and friends they know are safe and secure and what they're doing and being able to take their shots, wear their masks, whatever it is, without their politicizing and, and scare tactics. They can stay at home with their family to see a great evening of spectacular championship boxing. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. We have two more, Jonathan. Uh, Crystal Hart, we're going to give you the floor, Crystal. Question for Jonathan. Okay, uh, Jonathan, I just wanted to ask you, once again, you did take this sort of at the last moment, uh, your prep, and how does MMA, I see a lot of boxers today uh, also uh, who have an MMA career going into the ring. Are there a lot of differences or, or how to, do they connect? I'm not too much on MMA. I did it one time and uh, I'm not, I prefer boxing. Boxing is more of a mental game. Uh, I find MMA just it's more I say luck, but more boxing. You got to set stuff up. You got to set this up, or you got to see where he's messing up. Boxing is more mental than physical to me. Okay. And Don King, I wanted to ask you, I'm from Warren, Ohio, and it's been a long time uh, since a, a big event like this has been there. And you have Boom Boom Mancini. I remember when he fought at Mollenkov Stadium. So tell us how you came up with uh, Packard Music Hall here in Warren, Ohio. Well, you know what? We, was, we wanted to have a homecoming, and, and, and it was just a great uh, opportunity because that's Ohio is where I'm at. And it's right down far, right, you know, Warren right is... is not too far from the training camp where you had Muhammad Ali and, and you had Tyson and Larry Holmes and all of them had to train. And even the first prince from Bel Air, you know, Steve Smith, you know, he was there and, and he was a disc jockey at that time. And, and I let him stay there for a month to take care uh, uh, of, of Tyson and, and to be able to do his program. And next thing you know, he's in Hollywood, become a star, the prince of Bel Air. So now, and he just won an Emmy too, as, as, as coming up this uh, uh, right now on these Emmys. So all of this, a lot of stories there, but it's just great to be coming home again and to be able to deal with what is real and worn at the, at the packet uh, music hall is going to be a, quite exciting and provocatively beautiful when all the people be out there and I'll be looking forward to seeing you, homie. And we're going to be able to deal with the what is real and giving the people what they want, a great evening of championship boxing. And that's what's going to show 
the difference of what we do according to what anyone else does. I promote the people. That's why I say I'm a promoter of the people, for the people, by the people. It's, 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 it's the people is my most important asset. And so we're going to have an exciting time. And it's be great right there because that's where I started, you know, right there in, in, in Ohio, you know, and dealing with the hospital that was uh, prejudiced would not allow uh, uh, people to get in and out. So what, what we did is I brought Muhammad Ali in and we had an exhibition with five or six guys. So we, this is a thing of bringing glamour and having fun. That's a good times roll. It don't matter whether you're young or old, let the good times roll, you know? So we say, hey, hey everybody, let's have some fun. You don't live with once when you're dead, you're done. So let the good times roll. <laughs> and so we're going right back into Ohio and to be right there with you. And, and you know, Gittry gonna be doing his thing, trying to capture that world title. And we're gonna have uh, a Trevor doing his thing to try to hold on to that title. So you got one pulling one way and another pulling the other way. Something has got to give and give it will on the 29th of January, right there in Warren, Ohio at the Packet Music Hall. And I want you to be there if you can see it live in every color. But if you can't, get it on the screen, you know, uh, donking.com, you know, live streaming. So I'm looking forward to having you. The audience is what I'm looking for to have a real knockout with a spectacular blockbuster. Thank you. Jonathan, we have uh, one more question. Before I get to that question, I wanted to introduce your manager, Jonathan Liberto. Jonathan Liberto, do you have uh, anything to add about your fighter and uh, how you discovered him? Jonathan? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, I'm here. Yes. No, uh, look, we... We, we just enjoy any opportunity. We love it. We uh, Gidry's been working real hard. We threw some local shows. That's how we discovered Gidry down here. Uh, We've seen the talent he had, the boxing IQ, the power, the whole package, and we're just extremely excited to uh, have this opportunity. Thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan Gidry, one last question from Ted Lewis, who you know. And uh, then after this question from Ted, then we'll switch over to Trevor Bryan. Okay, Jonathan yes. Gidry, Ted Lewis. John, uh, you, you uh, I don't know how much you've ever talked or been around uh, Don King before today, but you, and maybe his heyday uh, was a little bit before your time, but what do you think about being on a card promoted by, you know, someone, a boxing hall of famer and a legend like this? Man, it's, the, it's a great opportunity, man, to... Not a lot of people can say they fought on Don King Corner, fought on that show. Uh, I'm very, very happy to have an opportunity, and I'm glad that he's given me the opportunity to fight for this world title. Like he says, without giving people opportunities to show their talent, I'll still be on a shrimp boat or I'll still be crabbing or something. And he's actually given me a chance to display my, my talent, you know, and I'm, I'm really thankful for that. And, Don, if one last question for you, if I could. You're 90. Most people have long retired by then. It seems like you sound like the same guy I've been knowing 30, 40 years or more. Uh, when are you going to slow down? Well, when I go to heaven, you know, because they already tried to slow me down. You know, the gangsters, they blew me up. They shot me. They blew up my house, <laughs> my car. I fought them. Now I'm fighting a crooked system that we have here. You know what I mean? Where the women can't get their rights and equality and the people, the black people can't get no chance. And that's why I've been fighting when I come out of the penitentiary and, 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 and they sent for me to help them, all of the community uh, 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 elites and whatever. And, but, but we started right there at Forest City Hospital uh, that would only, the only one that would service poor people and black people. And so we had to keep that doors open. And so Muhammad Ali came in and he boxed five or six guys, you know, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, to to start me off in uh, in boxing because I didn't know nothing about boxing. I was a numbers man. I was running numbers out there in Cleveland, and so everything I did has been a challenge to make this nation fulfill its promise: one land indivisible with liberty and justice for all. You know, it's hold, we hold these truth to be self-evident that all men are created equal, a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition of equality. So this is what I fight because I love this country and I love the American people. And I have God as my true savior, my Lord and savior. So with him, I done went through battles. We just say a cat of nine lives. I done been challenged nine times and I'm still here. And nobody, uh, it, and you can't get too big or too small for me. I am one of the people because the, the bag ladies say, don't go down the street. You know what I mean? Such, such, such thing is happening. 
and saved my life that way. So you never know. That's why everybody's important to me. You know what I mean? And I and I love everybody. You don't know the you know, you know every race, color, creed, and religion. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? But it's whatever you are, you are because we're all God's children. And so I, I slow down. He had called me home. He got a reason for me to be here. And he got a reason for me putting on these six title fights here in, uh, and, and one. And we want to establish a, a process and a program to help those who are underprivileged, downtrodden, and denied, and especially the homeless, when we have a president who is bringing in people from out of, out of the country, foreigners, from all places free to come in. And they're not even going to give them a right to vote uh, without being an American. And here we got all these homeless people here that we could bring, give them a second chance. You know, give them a second chance. Give them a right to be regrouped and recapture themselves because they have lost their spirit. There ain't nothing wrong with them. You know, they just got their spirit has been broken. They just lost hope in, in America. I want to give them that hope back. And I want to get a program started where we can help them and to be able to, uh, to, to elevate, you know, preach elevation and make everything we do have something to do with the upward mobility of our people, the great American people. It sounds like you still believe in only in America. Only in America, the greatest nation in the world. Don't you ever forget it. Jonathan Guidry, thank you for joining us. Uh, we have uh, Trevor Bryan on with us now. So we will the champion switch of the world. wheels. The and... champion of the world, Trevor Bryan. The champion of the world. The yeah, the champion of the world. Yeah, the champion. Don't go, don't shortchange him. He's the champion of the world. <laughs> Tell him. Trevor, good to have you with us. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, how you've been staying ready for this fight? Hey, we're working hard. I've got a couple of good guys doing sparring with. Stacey McKinley is seeing all of that. Um, my team is taking care of me. We're going to take care of business the 29th. All right. You know, it's been a long, long time of coming for this fight. Exactly a, 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 a year ago from last year, so. We're here again to do it again on this January 29th show in Ohio. And as I recall, Messiah told me that as soon as that fight was over a year ago, you went right back into the gym the next day. Exactly. We I'm going to throw it open to questions from the media. Okay. We're looking forward to the fight. Uh, if you have a question, raise your hand. I will call on you. And we'll hear from the champ. James Conlon has the first question. James, we're going to call on you. Hi, Trevor. Uh, Trevor, it's been a year since your last fight, and obviously this is a shot to nothing for Jonathan Goodry. Uh, do you feel basically that you've a lot more to lose, that people are going to be looking at you to see what stage is the champ is? Has the year out affected you uh, in terms of your boxing ability and your hunger? Well, um, it's been a hard year for everyone, especially everybody in um, boxing right now. Um, boxing, how we, we use to feed our family with this coronavirus and all that. But we stay, we have been diligent, staying in the gym, working hard. And um, January 29th, we're going to show the world that um, the reason why I'm the champ. And I have a great opponent in front of me, 17 and 0, two draws. And like I said, I'm going to do what champions do. Yeah, and uh, Trevor, just on Jonathan Goodry, obviously he's come in as a, a replacement. Uh, in terms of knowing much about him, obviously he has fought maybe at not a televised uh, stage. He's fought at lower level. Has it been hard really to learn about him in terms of the homework and what his talents are? Well, I sat down and watched him a few times with a couple of fights that he had. And um, again, we, we don't really worry about what other opponents do. We worry about what the dream team does best. And I, I have my key opponents that I usually use every single fight, and I plan to capitalize on that and continue to work hard and get this one that I need to get on the 29th. And finally, just a question for Don. Uh, Don, you've been associated with some of the all-time boxing greats uh, throughout the decade. Uh, being involved in the 21st century, being involved and in being associated with uh, Trevor Bryan, uh, what unique attributes has Trevor got as a person that you can associate to some of your former uh, employees? He has the spirit <clears throat> of a winner. He don't question and with doubt and ambiguity, you know, as unwavering dedication that he is the dream and the dream is then come true. So now he's personifying and in 
in place on this dream for everybody can see that he gives he cares about people he cares about his family and oh, those are the things that i look upon a man to give back to the community to give back to the family from whence he come and so trevor has that's why i say when when steve was telling about trevor bryant champion trevor bryant he works hard to get that dream to get it there so let's don't let's don't desiccate it and let's don't play no games or or, or just by what good and chit is you know be saying no every time you meet and greet that dream that he's worked so hard and dedicatedly uh, to achieve, you know, and he, and he goes into that with the spirit, with the team, with the dream team, as you just heard him say, and that's what Stacey McKinley and Edie brothers and whatever that they work with him. And the cry is victory, victory, hear my cry, B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. That is what comes from the hard work and the dedication and commitment that you derive to the occasion. And so now I got him somebody that he got to really fight in order to demonstrate, and this is what he really wants, because he wants to show how his talent rises up. And you would think, you know what I mean, that he would be one of the great musicians playing a Stradivarius violin, you know what I mean? Because you got to play every note. It's got to be in the right place at the right time in order for you to get the fame and the claim. And so he's going to be right there uh, working out and feeling, but he's feeling for the people. And that's what I like about uh, 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 my dream champion, uh, Trevor Bryant. And right now he's given opportunity to another man, Jonathan Gittry, to get that dream too, but he he's not concerned with that. That ain't that ain't his that ain't his bowl of tea. That's not, that's up to Jonathan. He coming there with what he has. Like he said, he does not work according to what other fighters did with their talent. He coming there demonstrating what he can do with his talent. In other words, he's a trailblazer, a pioneer. You know, he he carves out a new path for you to follow, not following the path of the old. Champion. Many tanks done. Champion. Many tanks. Okay, we're going to go to uh, Ted Lewis. Ted, got a question for the champ? Yeah, champ, uh, you are you are a world champion, but uh, outside the WBA, the, the ranking services don't have you that high. Do you think they're wrong? And what do you have to do to prove yourself to get up into those Tyson Fury type mm -hmm. type fights? Um, in the next few fights, um, everybody's going to be shouting my name. I'm, I'm not worried about that. Um, boxing people know who I am, Trevor Bryan M. Um, I'm here to stay. I'm, I'm here to fight the best, and I want to fight the best. I'm among the best. I am the best. I'm the champion. So at the end of the day, that these people are going to know my name. They're going to catch up. I know what kind of superstar I am. The world's going to catch up in a second. <laughs> Talk to me, baby. That's what I want to know. Well, I want to know. <laughs> and Don, you have another question? what do you yeah, Dom, what, what do you see Trevor's ability, his ability level? He's got great ability. <clears throat> and, and each time, you know, you see yourself, a, a good champion never knows how much ability he has because he, 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 he keeps getting his spirit, gets up in his enthusiasm, and he works at it. Muhammad Ali said he never would know how good he was until he lost. He said because he didn't know what losing was. He said, but then I found out what losing was. He, then he came back and he recapped it and the loss and came out and dealt with people with a way of uh, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, your eyes can't hit, your hands can't hit what your eyes can't see. And so Trevor <laughs> coming with his, he come in with his dream and that his dream thus far has got him there. And so now every time he goes, he wants to improve, improve, improve. And that's what makes a great champion. You know what I mean? It's dealing with it. And every time you go to bat, you know, a comeback, you know, you got to come out and rise with victory. You got to come back with victory. So that's what Trevor is doing. And that gives me the thrill to go out there to be able to help promote and give him an opportunity to demonstrate that he can go out there and he can be a Tyson Fury or he can be uh, any one of those guys that's out there. Because all of them have setbacks, as you know, with Tyson Fury. And they, and they all make these things that we're trying to do happen. But that gives and motivates youngsters and young kids that they can be, even if not in boxing, whatever they aspire to be. They can dedicate themselves, thank God that they're an American, and work with God and their own a talent that God gifted them with. And then that way they can supersede any type of obstacles that comes in their path. And that's what it up to, it's up to him. I can talk about and promote and let the world know about this great champion, Trevor Bryant, but he's got to demonstrate that in that ring. And in them four corners, he's got to be able to rise to the occasion. You know what I mean? Snatch victory out of the jaws of defeat. And that's what he's about to do. And that's what he says he's waiting to do on the 29th of January at the, at, the, at, the, at the Packet Music Hall, you will see Trevor Bryant live and in action and live and in color. 
And so we want you to be there. If you can't be there, then check it out on the screen at your house where you can have the comfort of your beautiful wife and your children. And you can watch and inspire the greatness there with them and show what a household name called for the champion Trevor Bryant that yesterday's nobody and today's somebody. And so we're going to be able to see that and make that inspire them to be great and work hard in this great nation called America. So I'm looking forward to my side. Every time I put on a fight, I'm as excited as any fan would be because I don't know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? I want to be there to see it, what it happened and see the new bridge and talents be developed right before my eyes. So I'm there, you know what I mean? So I'll be right there with you all looking at this, this history in the making and, and enjoying every delicious moment of it. Let the good times roll. Hey, everybody, let's have some fun. Ted, anything else? Now that, uh, yeah, if I could, Trevor, uh, listening to Don King has to get you pumped up. What influenced <laughs> you and your management to, uh, uh, to go with him as, as your promoter and, and, uh, how much of an inspiration or influence is he having on your career? Um, it's a lot, it's a lot. Cause, um, when I first signed with Don King, he, he showed me, Hey, these are all the champions I made just to sit up and live up to that. And I told him, like, hey, that day, I'm going to be a champion myself, so you're going to add me to this list. And here I am now, and I'm, I'm building my own legacy, and I'm starting starting what the dream team does best. And we, we continue to still win. We continue to still look good. And like I said, I can't wait for these big, big blockbuster fights that's coming up soon for my, for my career. And right now, we have a big guy in front of us right now, Jonathan Grady, 17-0, with two draws. And I got to show the world that, why the, I'm the champion I am. And like I said, I'm just happy to continue my legacy. Great. Thank you. Okay, we'll call on Carlos Toro. Carlos, you're on with the champ. Hi, Trevor. Thanks so much for taking time to talk to us. You know, you've there's you've been on this sort of roller coaster with uh, Babu Char for what seems to be a very, very long time. And is there a part of you that feels a little bit disappointed that after all of this, it turns, it ends up with you not stepping into the ring with Mamu Chard on January 29th. Yeah, of course. Um, Like I said, I'm, I'm a fighter, man. And when, when my promoter and manager say, Hey, this is the next fight who you fighting. All I can do is prepare and get ready for that. And um, all the other fighting outside of the ring is what my manager and my promoter does. And it, it's sorry that, he, um, he can't make it for the second time, but the show must go on. And again, like I said, I have a strong opponent that's a replacement at 17 and no with two draws. And I have to, like I said, continue to do what Trevor does best in that fight. And you guys will see that January 29th. And like I said, whoever else they put in me, put in there with me in the future, I can't think about what happened or what should have happened. I'm thinking about that day, who I'm going to fight, who's next, and period. Like, that's how we that's how we rock and that's how we going. So, again, like I said, I have a big struggle point in front of me, and I'm ready for him. Jan January 29th, I'm ready to go. Not to sort of ask, what, uh, looking ahead, looking past Jonathan Gidry, but not too long ago we had uh, Daniel Dubois, Mention your name as a fight that he like to have this year, and just want to get your thoughts on his comments on him wanting to fight you at some point this year. Um, I'm the champion. I mean, a lot of guys are supposed to shoot this shot for me. I mean, it's the same thing I was doing when I wasn't in the position. Now I'm in the position wherever they give me and sign on the dotted line. That's who I'm fighting. I, I don't care too much about fuss of who this, who that. I mean, like I said, once their name comes in with my promoter and my management and say, hey, this is who you're fighting next, all I do, I'm a fireman. I love to fight. I sign that dial line, I'm ready to go. So whoever the name may be, the boss, whoever, I mean, Tyson Fury, wh whoever, like, that's what I do best. I'm the champion. Everybody's supposed to gun for me. Everybody's supposed to speak my name. But in a second, everybody's going to be speaking my name and saying, Trevor Bryant is the true champion, and we want to see him in there with the best. Quick question to Don. You know, if, if Trevor Bryan emerges victorious later this month, what is sort of your roadmap for Trevor Bryan's 2022? I'm sure you would not want him to sit uh, sit with just this fight as his only fight in 2022. Uh, so, what is sort of the roadmap if you had if you have one sort of already in your head mapped out? Does it include maybe well, working uh, let, let and see if the Mamu Chart fight gets made again? He he's ready to fight anybody. You know, you, you know what the song says. You don't live but once and when you're dead, you're done. So let the good times roll. So that means anybody and everybody, bring them all. He's ready to take them on. You know what I mean? And that's what it's all about. He said he's a fighter and he comes to fight. 
and we will take on anybody. It don't matter about it. And we take Tyson Fury tomorrow. In fact, we may take them all in the same night. You know what I mean? Yeah. Give, them, give, them, give them a chance there to come on and fight. This is what it's all about. You know, so we would put that cry out. Victory, victory, hear my cry. You know, B-I-C-T-O-R-Y. You know what I mean? That comes from dedication and commitment and giving back the family spirit and loving the people and representing the people and representing what you can be and what you want to be if you're willing to sacrifice and have good faith in God and dedicate yourself and commit yourself to achieving it. And you can accomplish it. And that's what he's ready to do. And so that's why we want, uh, we want to take opponents that will never been lost. And that's why we wanted to be able to de demonstrate and, and illustrate that he, a champion is a champion. I mean, and he didn't come there looking around to pick around and try to find out who's what, where, when, and how. Just bring them to me. Put them all there right there for me. You know what I mean? So then we want Joshua, Tyson Fury, whoever, oh, Dante D. Wilder, or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Bring them on. That's all. That's what we want to do. Bring them on. And what, how are you going to do that? Win the confidence of the people. When the people keep seeing them shine like new money, you know what I mean? Then they're going to start, they're going to demand that he get an opportunity to fight. You can't keep on crying wolf, you know what I mean? You got to be able to deal with it. And so what we do is I deal with the people and I deal with promotion for what it is. You know, not about how much of a fee I can get out of a TV network. I put on a fight to give the people what they wanted. Then they get a people's champion. They will back him because they're the ones that will pay to make him be able to be what he can be and get paid for it at the same time. And that's why I work with the people. And the people are my most important asset. And so we got a champion here. He's got to go out there to be the champion. That gives uh, Gidry an opportunity to say he can become champion. This is what makes it a, 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 a great event. A spectacular with all of these champions. One is a challenger and one is a champion. And so which one is trying to get to be that champion? And that champion keeps defending this and he keeps getting a bigger and better record each and every time he has another win. And so this was will demonstrate to the public and the world at large that I am uh, unbeatable. I am the champion. And I haven't forgot from whence I come. So I'm coming back home to you, the people. And that's what makes me feel good to be going back home from where I started you know, in, in Ohio. And so, so it's, a, it's a homecoming, but it's going to be a thrilling homecoming because we're going to be exciting, have entertainment, and we're going to be home and safe, and, and we're going to have a sellout crowd. That's, what, that's all we want. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Trevor. Thank okay, you. we'll call on Lance Pugmire. Lance Pugmire next, champ. Lance Pugmire. <laughs> hey, how you doing, Don? I, I'm speaking of... Speaking great, of man. Good, good. Speaking of you going home, what's it like for you? I mean, are you a particularly sentimental guy uh, and coming back home to Ohio? What are your thoughts as you step back into the, you know, the ground that you used to walk over uh, daily? Well, you know what? I really never left. You know what I mean? My physical being has left. I was going to another great state of Florida, and but I got houses in Las Vegas. So when I was in the great state of Nevada, but Senator Harry Reid, whom I just lost, uh, what America just lost, one of the great friends of mine. Both of us come from humble, humble beginnings, and we work very, very hard for the benefit and the betterment of the American people. And Senator Harry Reid and Senator Bob Dole, they were some very close friends of mine because they were wonderful people that were selfless. They cared about others rather than themselves and worked with themselves in order to bring about the changes that we have, uh, have the benefit of right now. So it'd be good to go home and revisit because that's where my headquarters is still there, you know what I mean? Because that's where the memories came and where it was and you don't forget from whence you come. I mean, so there's a the big training camp there, you know, where Muhammad Ali coming all the way down the line from George Foreman, Muhammad Ali, all of them had a chance to train there and we made it, it a, a place where you could identify, relate to, and be a part of. So it's like, it's like coming home, you know what I mean? It's a thrill beyond description. Uh, you just have to be able to deal with it, you know, within yourself that this is great. And those of us that are still there that used to be here, uh, great. You'd be happy to see them. But the, the spirit of those that, that are passed on and went on high, you, you enjoy that, that, that reoccurrence, you know, in, 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 in down memory lane, in the journey of life. So it's going to be a real thrill for me to get back there and not snow. You know, we go to Florida. You go to Florida because you go for the climate. You know what I mean? The sunshine, but it rains all the time. But, you know, in, in Ohio, you get that blistering snow, and that's what they got now. And that's what champions have to do. They have to adapt and acclimate themselves.
to the different climates, you know what I mean? Not only with the fight in front of them, they got to be ready to be able to, to deal with the snowman, you know what I mean? <laughs> so therefore, that gives the fighter all the different variations of what it could be and how it could be, you know what I mean? So ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, ain't no river wide enough to keep me from being the champion of the world, the dream, and the dream come true. Absolutely. Coming back with the heavyweight champion has got to mean something to you. Obviously, you scratched and clawed through life to make something of yourself. But can you provide us an update? What's the latest on the Macabu Canelo talks? Are they, is that officially off now? Or are you still holding out hope that that fight could happen? Well, you know, it can't happen before you give this guy named uh, Tabiso. Uh, it, it was a Machuhu, you know, because don't forget, you can't count the chickens before they hatch. You know what I mean? Now, he's got to be fighting on the 29th. Macabu will demonstrate his talent, his skill, and his ability on the same show on the 29th. And, 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 and winning that show, he has a great opportunity because he's been called out, not him seeking uh, Canelo, Canelo seeking him. So that makes it all, all together different. And so now he wants to be able to demonstrate that he's going to stop Canelo, but he got to first get past uh, M. Chuhu. You know what I mean? So therefore, that's what makes this card even more exciting, more provocative, and more beautiful. That's the co-main event along with uh, uh, champion Trevor Bryant. And so it's going to be a great, great, great evening of boxing. And 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 Sal Canelo, uh, you know, was a great Mexican fighter. And I'm a great Mexican promoter because me casa su casa. You know, I'm right there. <laughs> You know, Viva Mexico. So, so, that, so I'm right there. So me and me and Sal got to get together because all of the great fighters of Mexican, you know, Julio Cesar Chavez, all of them were there with me. You know, so we got everybody working as we work together and to promote. So it's going to be fabulous. You know what I mean? So Canelo is a big star shining out there in the distance. You can see it in the distance, you know, like the Northern Star, you know what I mean? When we were trying to escape from slavery, following that star, he ended up in Canada somewhere running away from here because they had it in, in bondage. All right, so therefore we got to be now ready. You know, so, so Canelo is that star, he's up there in the wake and all of them can get paid, you know what I mean? But Canelo wants the title. He don't care about none of them. He wants the title and so therefore he's up to that title and he's going to try to get it. Well, Macabu says when he gets through uh, beating uh, M. Tutu, that in the way he's going to get to him, he's going to knock him out. So that, that also adds luster and anticipation and excitement uh, to this card. So this is going to be a super spectacular card. And, and Canelo's in the background. So, you know, he's, he's, he's a, me amigo, you know, or my brother, you know what I mean, whatever you does. So it's, 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 uh, uh, it's going to be happy for me all the way around. And hopefully I can get him to come in uh, to be at the fight. He, so far, he said he didn't want to come all that cold snow. So, you know, maybe maybe the sun is shining one day. <laughs> he can right. Canelo in there. <laughs> so he can witness, he can witness true greatness from the two fighters, uh, Macabu and, uh, and, and, and Tabiso. So it's going to be great, man. This is really going to be an exciting, provocatively beautiful spectacular that's going to take place on an extravaganza second to none. And I'm excited about it. Yeah, last thing, last yeah, thing for you. Oh, sorry. Last thing for you, Look. Trevor. I, I just wanted to ask you, I mean, obviously with uh, the heavyweight division uh, really having a renaissance with Tyson Fury and uh, Anthony Joshua, o Usyk and Wilder performing so strong. Can you talk about the, maybe the pressure that you feel to be sensational on this, on this fight card to make sure that your name is, you know, being elevated into those, into that circle? Um, it's no pressure at all. I'm a heavyweight champion as well. My name is going to be a mention among those same guys that you just said to me. Um, by continuing to get these good fights I'm getting now on January 29th and to continue from there. Um, again, like I said, Trevor Bryan's here to stay. I'm here to defend this title with the best. So um, you guys are going to see my name. I'm going to be sensational. Like I said, I just have to get past January 29th with um, Jonathan Goodrick. And um, like I said, you guys are going to be seeing the dream much more of me. Thank you both so much. Thanks, Lance. Uh, we got three more questions, and then we'll call it a night, Trevor. Appreciate you and Don. Uh, let's go to Behind the Gloves team for their question. Hi, Trevor. Joe Anke here from Behind the Gloves. We were just talking about the pressure uh, upon you. There is a lot of talk about you still having to prove yourself, despite the fact that you are the champ, the WBA World Heavyweight Champ. Obviously, people saying that Stavan was 43 years old. It's been a year since you fought. What 
kind of a fight, what kind of a win would be satisfactory enough to you to prove to those people that you are good enough? Uh, and how do you feel about the fact that people still want you to prove that? I think the one satisfying thing that people wants to see from me is that me constantly being there and getting these good ones. Um, like I said, I have a, a tough, strong opponent in front of me, January 29th. And let's talk about last year. This time I had another tough opponent as well. Um, I was supposed to be fighting Manuel, Manuel Char and he wasn't able to make it. So they put that ex-champion there, WBC ex-champion Burmester Ver, and he gave me a hell of a fight. And I, yes, I, I did pull through. Um, I got the knockout in the 11th round just to show people that I can box, I can move around, I can slug, I can do whatever you guys want. And you guys are going to constantly see that from me. And um, like I said, continuing to get these these other fights and having these big names, you guys are going to start mentioning my name among the best. And because I am the best and I'm on the top of the food chain. So like I said, you guys are going to see much more of Trevor Bryan, the dream. And like I said, after we get this win January 29th, it's on talks for whoever's next. Cause you know me, I'm not, re I'm, I'm ready to fight whoever. It doesn't matter. And on that topic, you've got Daniel Dubois, who's 22 years old, calling you out as though he feels that it's easy pickings, an easy world title belt for him. He has a fight lined up on March 19th. What do you have to say to that? The way he's been speaking about taking your belt so easily. He, he's supposed to, he's supposed to say that. He's another, he's another fighter. He's, he's gunning for the champion himself. I'm the champ. They supposed to say that stuff. I have nothing against that whatsoever. But personally, if you want to ask me anything, I mean, I, I seen the I seen the guy, I seen the little fella, and I think he needs to go defend his last loss he got. I mean, before you start talking about the champion. And once you go ahead and do that, then you come come step up to the champion. We make things happen. Cause like I said, man, everybody's gonna gun for me because I am on top of the full chain. I am the champion. And they have to come see me. So like I said, man, I'm gonna continue to do what the dream does best, keep winning and shining. And like I said, all these big top names are going to come about. And this whole conversation is going to be a different conversation by the end of the year of saying, man, Trevor Bryan, you did tell us so. And I'm here to stay. I'm not going anywhere. Excellent. And just one for Don. You've got a great championship night ahead of you. Um, boxing has obviously changed. You're a legend in this industry, but boxing has been changing in recent years. You've got championship fight nights like this one. You've also got celebrities, a recent Ohio fight with a YouTuber, and of course, uh, the ex-boxers coming back, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr. How do you feel about the way boxing's changed? And do you see these two types of fight nights possibly merging in the future? Well, I, the boxing has changed because the enthusiasm and the uh, the uh, determination and the stick to itiveness has not been there, and the promoters have lacked. They are trying to capitalize on how much money they can get rather than building an exciting people's champion, where that they can keep getting the people to come out to see it. And so you got to be able to demonstrate that the that the talent speaks for itself. You know what I mean? And 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 the world wants a winner. All right. So therefore, if you're going to be a winner, you got to be stay at, 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 at you got to stay at work at your trade. And so what I do is I promote the people and you're promoting the people. The people understand because we're relating and identifying. And when you're at the mirror shaving or, or, or whatever you are singing, you know, you're, 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 you're emulating and imitating that champion in your respective regard to whatever position that you are looking for and for whatever acumen you're trying to put into uh, your lifestyle. You know, so that's when you can spread the the the, the, the spirit of of, of 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 achievement. You know, is when you can have your people see the great champion, and then try to emulate and imitate him in their own sphere of endeavor. And so I'm looking forward to uh, bringing back. That's why I didn't want to just come back with a with a with a championship match. I had to do a lot of work. You know, what I mean, in order to get Trevor okay to be able to fight. Uh, uh, why I wanted to bring an undefeated fighter so they couldn't find no fault because he ain't never had no loss. They can say, well, he ain't fought this and he ain't did this. That's all of that say one thing. But I give credit to every boxer that goes up them three steps. You know what I mean? They don't understand that, but that's where it is at. And so when, when a boxer keeps his mind on the opponent in front of him, he has a much bigger and better chance of becoming the super champion that he wants to be. And when, he, but when a boxer goes and try to fight on 16 different fronts, he's gonna be the, the manager, the boxer, the grocery, he's gonna do everything, he's gonna be the cheese maker. You know, the, too many cooks spoils the broth. You know what I mean? So he got to stay dedicated and committed. And that's why I, I like about, and this respect about Trevor, uh, champion Trevor Bryan, because he got the dream team and he never ceases to mention that team 
because as there is no I in team, it's a T E A M that's on the B A M. And it, it, it let come up. Hot team uh, hot on the beam. And that's what we're gonna make it happen. That's why I say put a little bit more fun into a levity into the sport, but at the same time stay dedicated on your focused on your goal and your achievement. All right. So that's why I'm looking forward to being back home, to be back among the people and uh, uh, where I began because I started at the top. My first fighter was Muhammad Ali. I don't know, I never knew what it was to be at the bottom. You know what I mean? So therefore, I've always been there and I'm still standing there. And so yeah. right now, we are working toward the glory of bringing people and bringing beautiful people like yourself that will come up and ask the questions, that will be there to carry the word to friend and for like that a great spectacular is about to take place on the 29th of January at the Packers Hall in uh, in Ohio, but it's going to be seen around the world on the screen. So get out there and check it out and get your friend and your family to come and be at your house, you know what I mean? And you can do all of this here for $49.99. And so therefore you'll be able to have all the friends, family, have your cookies, your drink, your ice cream, and talk trash, you know what I mean? That's why you pick a your hero who you want to pick to see who's going to win. And you got six times to do this. So that gives you an opportunity to have an evening of yourself on your own, that you could be a championship evening. So I'm looking forward to giving the people what they want. That's the best in boxing, but also the best in inspiration and dedication and commitment and to realize and realize and understand and appreciate the great nation of America. In spite of all of the different hardships that we're enduring right now, let's take a break and get a little relief. You know what I mean? And remember, you only live with once in you and you did, you're done. So let the good times roll. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. Okay, there's two questions remaining in queue, and then we'll be done. Eddie Goldman for the chant. Go ahead, Eddie. Hi, can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. Very yeah. good, yeah. thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Trevor. Hello, Don. Uh, question first for Trevor. You fought Jonathan Guidry in the amateurs back in 2011. What do you remember of that fight, and how have both of you changed since then? You told me I fought Jonathan Guidry before? It's what it says. Don't <laughs> box right there. You, you won. Yes. I, I, I didn't know that you. <laughs> oh, man, it go, man. Oh, baby. <laughs> Great fires before. And like I said, um, transferring from my amateur career into my professional career, it's a brand new platform. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm here now. I'm the champion now. And... um. I'm willing to fight anyone, anybody, especially if I fought him before, I'm willing to fight him again just to show him that I am the man. I am the truth. Trevor Bryan, the dream is the dream. I'm here to stay and I'm here to show people that this legacy starts here. It starts to show with these great fights, especially, like I said, if this is a second time duo, I'm, I'm coming to show that <laughs> I'm going to do it again even more. <laughs> <laughs> now you remember, Don, why you once called me the Internet King, because I look up all this stuff. Also for Trevor, when you fought Stavern last year, you were at the highest weight of your career. What can we expect in terms of your weight in this fight? Well, um, again, what's my title? My title is heavyweight champion of the world. Um, I'm a working in progress. Um, I'm coming, like I said, to just to show my abilities and my talent, what I can do with these guys and, and, and the guys that you guys put in front of me. Um, regardless, I'm, I'm coming to win. I'm coming to show my talent and to show the world that I'm here to stay. I'm here to be here at the heavyweight champion. And like I said, just you guys just keep putting the tough guys in front of me and I'm gonna show you the reason why they call me the dream and the reason why I'm gonna keep being who I am, keep doing what I do best and keep winning. And question for Don. Right now, Usyk is the WBA super champion and heavyweight. He, of course, is supposed to fight Joshua in the spring in their rematch. When do you see the winner of this fight between Trevor Bryan and Jonathan Guidry facing the winner of that fight? Well, what you see, what you see is what you get. The, again, he right now Trevor is the mandatory for Usyk because he won the he won the heavyweight championship and he defended it. All right, so now what is, uh, is uh, if, if, if whatever it is, Usyk is there, if they're, and naturally by them having that signed contract, and you got to honor their contract, and in so doing, uh, he had to fight, but Trevor would be ready. He made it categorically clear where it don't be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. 
and that he's ready to fight whoever they put in front of him. And I'm calling out all of the managers and all of the promoters, you know what I mean? Bring them on, you know what I mean? There ain't no, ain't no holes back. The one thing I will work, I like the Dickens out, outside the ring tour, any fighter that I promote and, and the community from which he come with the utmost of, utmost of respect and appreciation, you know what I mean? But in the ring, the fighter has got to fight himself. You know what I mean? He's got to be able to take that when that bell ring and he go through three steps. He got to be able to be focused on hit the guy in front of him. And so what he does uh, and, 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 and champion uh, Trevor allows his dream team and myself to pick the opponents. And so I pick the most, the best of all of them. And then as the time goes on to be the most, that, the one, the best that can bring in the most money. But that that comes down the line, you know, right now, winning is the whole game because you can't get nothing, you know what I mean, if you don't win, you know what I mean? So therefore, we're going out to win, to captivate the imagination of, of, the, of the, the imagination and inspiration and, 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 and the feeling of the people. And when you fight, you're fighting not only for yourself, you're fighting for your family and the people that you represent. You know what I mean? That's the fans, the sport fans all over the world. And so I'm looking forward to that with great enthusiasm and great anticipation. And so we're going to be there uh, to be able to demonstrate to the world, whoever I be promoting, I'm going to promote the people that's going to be able to see them, you know what I mean? And let them know what they're going to have, you know, and the fighter has to set up and prove what I'd be saying and make the dream come true. And so that's what we are, are working for and that's what we're going to keep on doing and we're going to keep on putting on for the fighters and the people. The people are the most important. And that's why you guys, the, the, the journalists and the people that are asking the question, fair, objective, and impartial. When you do that, you got something going. You know, just give everybody they just do. And what we're going to do is to give these people six of title fights right there on, on the 29th of January. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, six. You know what I mean? So they all going to be able to see champions in the making. Yesterday is nobody's, tomorrow somebody. And so we're going to climb that mountain of, 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 of despair till we get to the bright light of hope. You know what I mean? And so what we're going to do is to demonstrate that rather than to tell you, but we want to carry the word to friend and for like, that we come, we saw, we conquer. And that's what we're going to do. So you got championship fights that's coming out there and you've got a great champion sitting before you right now. And he's the dream and they called him Trevor Bryant, he's the champion of the world. Next on, last question, Ted Lewis. Ted, <clears throat> excuse me. Ted Lewis for a question? Yes, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, yeah, Trevor, one last thing there. Um, this is your first fight in a year. Uh, how important has been your uh, level of training and conditioning? You feel like you're you're in good shape. Your last fight, you went eleven rounds. Do you feel like that? Uh, as the longer the fight goes, the more it's in your favor. Um, we can train. We train hard. We work hard. We train for shit. Fifteen rounds. I know we don't have to fight fifteen rounds, but if I had to put that out in my tank, I could pull it out. But um, I'm in shape. I'm a heavyweight. I'm going to show you guys how I move my hands, how I get light on my feet, and how I put these combinations together. I am the champ. I am the dream. And like I said, I've come to show my talent on this wonderful platform that Don King has put in front of us for Ohio. And they're going to see. We're going to heat. I know it's cold in Ohio right now, but we're going to heat the place up January 29th. And like I said, I have a great opponent in front of me, an undefeated fighter that's really trying to dethrone me. And I got to do what I do best to show people that I am the man I'm here to stay. So, again, I'm going to be in shape. I'm going to be ready to go. For wherever, what, how many rounds? But hopefully, I can get this man out of here early. Cause, like I said, I don't get paid for overtime. So, like I said, I'm gonna be, in, I'm gonna be, in, I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna go, Jay. Go, people. And where are you well training? Said. Well said, champion. Well where said. are you training? So, Darfo Beach at Stacy McKinley's King Cobras. Darfo okay, Beach. Thank Florida. you. All right, gentlemen. Thank you for your time. We look forward to seeing everybody on the 29th of January. God bless America. Don't forget that, that Don King right. com, a live streaming right there, right there where you can have it in the company of your home. And the ones who want to come to Florida, I mean, not Florida, come to Ohio, we welcome you with great anticipation and great enthusiasm. You are welcome, welcome, welcome to see boxing at its best. 
From the rooter to the tutor. There we go. And we die with that, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming out and being Thanks, a part Trevor. of this, uh, All right. press conference. Thanks, Messiah. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Have a good evening.